it's 6.02. We're very happy to see or, or have evidence of the presence of, of um, all of you who are here. And um, uh, Keith, I guess, uh, how do you wanna, um, how, how would this be easiest for you? Uh, so I have the breakout rooms set up and I think if we just do them maybe one at a time, if we start with the, um, either one is fine. Uh, qual education quality is the first one listed. So if people wanted to let me know who wants to go into the quality committee room, um, I guess raise your hand and I'll start putting people in. Okay, I see Kari, Jen, Kelly, Mia. Let's see here, so. Uh, Can I ask a question? I'm kind of here at the pleasure of the um, negotiations committee, but if there are gonna be an executive session, is there anybody have an idea of where you want me or? I don't think we'll need you for our executive session meeting. Do you, Jonas? I think we should be okay. No. Okay. So, so Jonas, uh, you're muted. Jonas, you. Uh, no worries, Lisa. I will take care of those minutes. Okay. So I'll just kind of be in la la land until you guys come back as a board. <laughs> you normally we have someone take notes for the quality committee. Do we have a recorder for that this evening, other than you, Lisa? I don't think so. I've never done that. So I'd be happy to pop into that one if you want. Okay, that'd be great. Cause I normally we have a, another person but I don't see anyone else here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, if someone she's waiting. sending me a bunch of uh, face shields. Oh, good. Okay, go ahead, Flora. Can I ask a question? So if I go into uh, negotiations right now and then come out can I join back to quality or? Just let yeah. me know and I'll switch you. Yeah, I'll be here just watching to if people okay. want to go back and forth, so. It's gonna be our, our traffic hop tonight. Right, <laughs> uh, so far I have Jen, Kari, Kelly, Lisa, and Mia in the education quality committee room. Is there anybody else that wants to go into that room right now? Yeah, I will, it's Mary Lynn. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then negotiations. Who should I be putting into negotiations? All right. So give me one. It's like Lindy, Jonas, Stephen, Floor, Scott, Floor, Jonas, Chris, and Deborah. Lindy, Scott, um, Floor. Okay. Chris. Stephen, look, look, are you going into one or the other of these? Stephen, you're on the negotiations team, right? Yeah, he's okay. on. The, and Chris okay. raised his hand for that too. Chris okay. McVeigh. Okay. So I think, what about George? I don't have George in, in our room yet. I'd like to listen in on negotiations, please. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Okay, here we go. Trust that all of those squares that I've that I'm seeing have people actually behind them and listening. Um, welcome to all of you. Very happy that you're here. This is, of course, our second to last meeting of the school year, um, amazingly. Um, I've, uh, I, I do believe that the chat function is re-enabled. So um, hopefully that will, um, that will help. If we have any problems with it though, we might have, to, um, might have to shut it down if it turns out that it's getting in the way rather than helping us. Um, so, uh, welcome, as I say, um, moving on to, uh, agenda revisions. Um, this is the second to last meeting of the school year. Um, and, uh, with that, it's the second to last meeting that we have, uh, Deborah with us as our, as our interim superintendent. 
So um, the chief revision that I'd like to propose is to add an executive session after future agenda items as a new 9.0. Um, this would be uh, part one, I guess, of Deborah's end of uh, end of assignment debrief. Um, there will be a part two at our next meeting on the 17th. I'm hoping that by dividing them in half, we'll be able to um, to do justice to everything that um, that Deborah has to share with us during, I think you will all agree, one of the most eventful years of um, the history of our, of our schools. Um, are there any other uh, agenda items that, uh, first of all, is there any objection to doing this? Great, okay, so nine, new 9.0 executive session, Deborah, um, end of, end of assignment debrief part one, uh, which touches on a whole variety of executive session topics from contracts to um, personnel evaluations, attorney client privilege. There's, um, we check off a number of the, of the executive session boxes for this. Um, so uh, are there other agenda revisions that anybody would like to suggest, Fleur? I, I would like to do what you suggested to to reaffirm the VSA and Vermont Principals Association and Vermont Schools Association statement as a board. Great. Um, should we put that under board operations? Maybe should we have that as a um, as a four point zero one? Um, maybe do that first after after um, Mia and Towns have had their. Have had their say. Um, yes. Any objection to that? 4.01, um, uh, affirming support for VSBA, VSA, VPA uh, statement um, against systemic racism. Okay, good. Um, in that case, uh, any other public, uh, sorry, any other agenda revisions before we move to public comments? If not, let's go to public comments. Um, do any members of the public have um, comments that they'd like to share with us? Uh, because um, it's hard for me to see, I would encourage a member of the public to just to speak up. Hi. And <laughs> yes, David. Yes, Hi. Hope you're well, that's all. Um, Thank My main you. interest at the moment is wondering about the new school year and how things might run with um, some kids staying home and some kids going to school. It seems like that's probably the hardest, even harder than just remote working, trying to do both in, present, in person and remote at once. Um, but I'm only speaking up because you're wanting a member of the public to speak up and say, so hi, I hope everybody's <laughs> well. I hope you continue to do well. That's, that's wonderful, David. Thank you. And um, I think we might take your question and uh, if we can hold it for uh, agenda item 5.1, the superintendent's report. Deborah, um, are you willing to, um, to take that on when we get to your, uh, to your bit? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so if uh, Thank you so much, David. I, I, it just reassures me that the public is there and, and paying attention. Um, any other members of the public before we move on to Mia and Towns? Very good then, Mia and Towns. Uh, so once again, I don't know if there are a lot of Well, I don't, I don't know if there are a lot of, uh, sorry, <laughs> just... Is this your... <laughs> yes, Alphonse and Gaston, please, after you. <laughs> <laughs> Mia, you should speak. Uh, 
I was just going to start off by saying that um, this day, June 4th, is the second anniversary of U32 raising the Black Lives Matter flag. So that's probably the biggest thing that's happening besides the pandemic um, in the school community right now. So there, um, there's going to be an event tomorrow on Zoom. I could get the link out to the board members if that was something you guys would be interested in. And there's that's what people have been talking about and everything that's been happening nationally with George Floyd and all of that. Mia, you could type it into the chat if you happen to have it handy. Yeah. And I we can. Can. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I was also going to mention that um, it's from 3.30 to 4.30 tomorrow. And I think that um, just as an example of, like just, just as a direct representation of what the student body has been uh, doing and uh, thinking about, it's a really great way to um, see how students have been, what work students have been doing and um, what work they're planning on doing. May I just ask how you're feeling about the end of the school year? Yeah, um, I think that's very different for a lot of different students. Um, personally, I am, things are, for, for students, for every student, summer is going to look very different um, than it ever has before. Um, there are a lot fewer job opportunities. There are a lot fewer just activities in general. So it's not, people are still excited to finish their work, but there is also this knowledge that it's going to be a very, very different summer than anyone has ever had before. Um, and that it is just going, I feel like there is a feeling that it is just going to be more of the same of being in your house and, uh, you know, just existing in a in a place that you've spent already spent so much time in. <laughs> um, so I think that there are mixed feelings for everyone. I bet. Thank you, Towns. Mia, um, you're you're graduating. Um, how how is that how is that going? Um, that feels a little weird, like, attending the Sahara event, really feel like, it is kind of weird, but I'm definitely excited to Mia, I'm sorry. It's it's hard to hear you. At least it's hard for me to hear you. Can you guys hear me? You're coming in and out. Yeah. I, I think. An echo too. Yeah. I, 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 your mom, I think, is maybe. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Okay, um, I think it feels a little weird to be ending the school year. It kind of feels like it's ending, but at the same time, it doesn't really feel like the end. But I'm excited to be done and to be moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do you do you see sort of the same something similar to what Towns is saying that um, a summer like summer has never been before, where you're kind of um constrained cooped up yeah it'll definitely be something different to navigate but i think it'll still be okay um any board member questions for mia and towns so just real quick um mia i've heard a lot of people express sympathy for the seniors graduating this year because of everything that you're missing out on 
um, and that you know there are these sort of milestones and these traditional you know hallmark you know high school moments that you guys aren't getting um, you know I think there, there, there might be also something to the fact that you guys, you know, everyone who is 18 graduating from high school right now has this shared experience that hopefully will be unique to everyone else who has ever graduated from high school. Um, and I wonder if you guys, you know, if you and your cohort are thinking about how that makes you unique and how you will have a different perspective on the world, you know, as you enter adulthood. That's definitely an interesting way to look at it, kind of like that. Yeah, that hasn't been something I've been hearing a lot of, but I hope that maybe I'll hear more of it. Great. Um, any other board member questions for Mia or Towns? Uh, if not, um, thank you both very much, and we look forward to, um, well, look forward, bittersweet uh, feelings to um, the last, your last meeting with us, Mia. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Towns, uh, you'll be continuing on, right? So yes, I will on. be. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Happy yeah. to hear that. Great. Um, so... In that case, let's move into 4.0 board operations, if there's no objection. Um, you'll notice that there's a lot of stuff in here. Most of it's housekeeping, um, sort of uh, pre-summer uh, tidying up of various actions. So um, I'm hoping that we can go through fairly briskly. Um, but, pardon me? Um, okay, so 4.01, uh, as Fleur has suggested, is um, the new agenda item is uh, to, uh, if I noted it down correctly, to affirm the board's support for the VSBA, VSA, VPA statement against systemic racism. Um, would, uh, would anybody like to make a motion? Floor. You're muted. There we go. Yeah, sorry. I was just going to say, I, I had written something quickly, but we can, I, I can just type it on the, on the bar and see if it feels right to, to you guys. I was just saying Washington Center Unified School District School Board wants to support our students and staff of color. We want to reaffirm the statements from the VSBA, VPA, and VSA and also continue to educate ourselves so we can continue to support our communities. Yeah. Do, you, do you see it there in the sidebar? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Does that it, sound like something that is acceptable? Would you like to move it? Yeah, I would like to make that motion if it looks Yeah, well, we can talk. I, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I'll, I'll take it as a motion and ask for a second. I'll second it. Marilyn seconds. Thank you. Um, so, any discussion? Uh, yeah, something that, like, I, I would want to start it out with, like, I agree with what uh, the VSBA, with the statement that they put out, and I think that, like, you know, um, publicly uh, putting ourselves in a place where we. Um, you know, reject racism and try and work to be better is a good thing. But I always worry with statements like this is that they're used as an excuse to not actually make change, that we put this statement out into the world and then don't follow it up with action. And that's not to like, you know, argue against the motion itself, but just that to keep in mind that um, a statement isn't action a statement isn't um isn't progress that we still need to that you know committing ourselves to the work of, of um to the work of you know fighting racism within our district is something that 
we need to physically implement um, and like we need to work actively work against. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I hope that, you know, we take this as an opportunity to make actual change, but to do that, we do need some kind of plan, some and, um, like some kind of at least like idea of the specific areas we need to improve, how we're going to improve them and the steps that we can take to do so. I guess, yeah. I guess those are just my thoughts. Thank you very much. Um, excellent. So uh, other, other comments from board members? I guess I was inspired by Stephen's uh, email to all of us today and by the work that I know that students have been doing for, for a while now. And, you know, I know that the work is never done, but I think they, there's, there's been a lot of effort and I am completely supportive of, you know, uh-huh. Cody, Stephen, and all of us doing work and professional development, the leadership team too, on this area. So I, I, I'm hopeful that this statement is not, uh, you know, like you said, Scott, Scott brought this up too in an email to us. And I was just feeling like it, it would be good for many people to not come just from administrators or just from the VSBA. It could be good for us to support it too, especially at this time. Uh, thank you, Flora. Uh, others? Anyone want to? Uh, what about the language of what Floor has proposed? Um, I, I would remove the. Um, oh, no, no. Tatao is going to say, to, let's remove the wants to support, you know, but I think Town's point is well taken. You know, let's not pat ourselves on the back for supporting. Let's express that we want to. Mm-hmm. Good. Um, any other comments? Shall we move to a vote? OK. Um, all in favor, please click your yes button. Opposed, click no. And I see, I see only green. So the motion carries. Thank you very much, Floor, and thank you, everyone. Good. So um, superintendent transition update. Um, just a, a quick mention that, um, uh, well, first of all, Deborah, would you like, do you have anything to say about this? Sure. Um, I have continued to meet weekly with Brian, and uh, this week we met with both Jen and Kelly as well for an additional hour. And uh, we're going to be um, bringing in our leadership team uh, members, particularly the central office at first. Um, there has been, I'll be speaking shortly about our how we plan to initiate fall reopening planning, but we intend to uh, involve Brian in that as well as a leadership team when we work on that. And uh, the leadership team has met and um, discussed Brian's entry plan and have uh, provided or plan to provide him with feedback tomorrow, I believe. Uh, I haven't been directly involved in that. Uh, and um, I think other than that, I think that's a, a fairly quick summary of where we are. And anyone like to add to that from our leadership team? Brian's going to meet with a small group of us on Friday to go over the feedback that we've generated uh, around his entry plan. So I think there's four of us that are meeting with Brian Friday afternoon. That's great. Thank you. And I'm working with Lori and Carla and Brian on his mentor contracts, which will, um, which will, you know, get ready and, um, but, uh, is that something that that you all are you board members are okay with having me sign it's within it's all with going to be within the framework of our master contract with Brian 
you remember that there were um, there was some language about mentoring in that contract that we executed with Brian. You okay with that? Okay, good. Thank you. Um, uh, that's all I've got. Um, oh, uh, Chris, did you want to say something, or was that was that a, a thumbs up? No, that was just saying agreeing. Thumbs up on your being able to sign contracts. Okay, thank you very much. Good. All right. So um, moving on then to 4.3, the blanket authorization for check orders, which you can find on page three of your um, of your packet. Uh, I will entertain a motion. <clears throat> make a motion um, that to we, um, the blanket order. On okay, three. Lindy moves um, that we approve the blanket authorization. Chris seconds. Very good. Um, any uh, any comment discussion? Okay. So this would go. Would this Sorry. go into effect after our next? Does this well, go into an, effect it's an after annual. our? Yeah, it's an annual uh, determination you have done in the beginning of June. And so it's a 12 month authorization from this point forward. But it, it's for when Next. we don't meet, as I understand it, correct? correct? It's, right. correct. You already have signed one for this fiscal year. This is for next fiscal year. Mm -hmm. um, but just like the warrants, we would need an email um, signature because you're not meeting in person. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. Okay. So um, Scott, remember, Scott, everybody. Diane. Sorry, Diane. Go ahead. Um, so I just have a question that I understand that it goes from year to year, but there is that one line that says this will remain in effect until further notice. So is there a reason why that line is in there if it's an annual renewal? We've had some board cancellations in the past, so the auditor recommends we have that statement in as a cushion in case for some reason next year you don't meet in the month of June. Interesting, yeah. Okay, are we good? Should we go to a vote then? All in favor of approving the um, blanket authoriza authorization for um, signature of checks, um, during times that we're not meeting, please click yes. If you're in favor, no. If you're opposed, and once again, I see all in favor. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, um, next is to authorize the superintendent to approve the fuel oil, propane, wood chip, and wood pellet and paper bids, um, which is in your packets on page four. Do we have a motion, please? Uh, I'll move that. Okay, Chris moves that we approve this authorization for bids on the above named items. Second? I second, that's a Diane. Diane seconds. Thank you, Diane. Any discussion? In that case, if you um, would please. When, oh. What is. Wait, wait. wait. Go ahead, is Chris. There, it's all yours. What is, what is the timing on um, when we anticipate these bids? And my um, question is um, if, it, if it's after July 1 and Brian is superintendent, whether or not there should be some consultation with the school chair, uh, school board chair because of his newness? Um, they'll be in next week. And um, the reason why we do this is because many of the bids have a 12 hour window to sign the documents. Um, otherwise you might lose that um, fuel oil uh, guaranteed pricing. So they're coming in next Friday. Uh, on all of these items or just the fuel oil? We went out to bid on all items. If for some reason something doesn't come in, I guess we could let you know at the next meeting. If for some reason we couldn't get bids for wood chips or something, we could let you know at the next meeting. 
Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good. All right. Anyone else? If not, let's go to a vote. Once again, all in favor of author of approving the authorization for um, for bids for these various energy supplies, please click yes. If you're opposed, please click no. And once again, all the yeses. Thank you, everyone. And going back to the next one, authorize the superintendent to sign all documents and contracts on behalf of the Washington Central Unified Union School District. Page five of your packet. So, um, you can see there's a motion, uh, sample motion uh, wording at the bottom. So uh, <clears throat> if someone would like to go ahead and make that motion. I'd be I, grateful. I move to authorize the superintendent to sign all documents and contracts on behalf of the district. Thank you, Jonas. Second? second. I second that. Oh, is that George? Second that. Yes, okay. I second um, that. Okay, thank you, George. Got it. Okay. It, it, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so, uh, discussion. Um, are there limitations on what contracts are, are involved here? And just because it seems very broad to me. I believe this is something that you've done each year, uh, Chris, but Lori can fill us in on that. It, in, it relates to the superintendent signing contracts um, such as individual employment contracts that the board has approved when we hire a new person or uh, when we complete a negotiations and we, just, and we develop individual contracts for all of our staff, those are signed by the superintendent um, as an example. Um, I was going to report later on that I have signed on behalf of the board the Kingsbury net metering contract uh, earlier this week, which was approved by you. Um, any specific work that's that requires the board's approval on a bid uh, would be contracts for construction. I sign those. So um, there's probably a very long list, but those are ones that I've been doing recently that come to mind that all relate to authorized um, activities and specifically in the areas of personnel and finance. Mm -hmm. Good. So my, my question is really going to, would the superintendent have the power to bind the, the district on contracts that the board does not know about? Um, I can speak to that somewhat. Um, so in the past, there are contracts like special education contracts that the board is not aware of. Um, in the past, it's been um, if it was over budget, the superintendent would bring it to the board for permission. If we meet the budget, then the superintendent would just follow the budget. So that's been our past practice. Um, there are options if you felt you needed to put in limitations in there. Um, Um, you okay, Chris? Any, you know, any I mean, other? I guess I'm just thinking about, didn't we limit the finance committee authorization to a certain dollar amount? And I know this might be a little different in terms of um, the superintendent being the uh, CEO of, of the district uh, and basically being having the authority to sign contracts just to keep the operation running. Uh, but it's just it just seems very um, open-ended to me, um, but I imagine it is limited by the fact of the budget. Right, I would agree. Is that and right, Lori? Well, yes, and, and, and I different that we've done that we've done before, and I actually think we changed it a little bit from what it was. And Lori can correct me if I'm wrong. From when Bill was with us, we made some changes already. So I and and Stephen Luke might remember this better than me. So I I feel okay with the, the way it's written. Yeah, I, one example is I, I think that 
there are times when waiting for um, two weeks for a board meeting so that the board could sign a contract could be limiting. So for example, uh, the recent meetings, the board's been approving bids. Those bids then take the uh, form of contracts. And there's a period of time that where the owner, which is the superintendent considered the owner or representative of the, of the school board on these contracts and the contractor have to negotiate the terms. And um, occasionally an attorney's feedback is required. Um, but I think a two week delay on contracts for construction could be problematic as long as the superintendent's carrying out the approval of the board uh, and within all legal expectations. So, um, That would, I, and I think that if you put a dollar limit on that, then that would, you know, the contracts that you've approved, the bids you've approved were between two and 300,000, for example. So, but understanding that those were authorized and they were budgeted as was stated. I think mm -hmm. that's really Jonas. I'm looking at uh, the minutes of the meeting last year where we did this and there's is there's no note of discussion. Um, <clears throat> the motion is so Bill shared that one of the results of an audit from the past was to re recommend this action. Then floor moved, you know, the same motion that, that I just made now, George seconded and it carried unanimously. So um, it seems, you know, just a little bit of historical context. Jonas, that is an absolutely magnificent use of the archives. Thank you. Um, <laughs> All is, power to Gmail. <laughs> Excellent. Um, are we ready for a vote then? Once again, all in favor, please click yes. Opposed, click no. Okay, I see all the yeses. Thank you very much. Um, can, I, can I ask a question? Uh, yeah, please, Kari. My recollection is this: these last four items are very much housekeeping and standard items that we do each year. I'm wondering if we could make a note for next year to just make this part of the consent agenda and try to spend as little time on it as possible. <laughs> how, how have you managed to read my mind? Um, what we should do is make sure that we have Jonas with us who will be able to tell us a year from now what, what we did today. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I think that's a great idea. Uh, is there any is there any objection to it? Do I hear? Okay. Nope. Okay. So um, let us then continue what I hope will be um, rapid progress to uh, revenue anticipation note and investment bids. As I recall, this uh, this particular item came in a separate. Uh, in a separate document? Yes, uh, we had to wait for the uh, bids to be uh, to arrive, which was uh, early this week. Uh, so right. they were emailed to you and I will read them in case you haven't located, it's fairly brief. Uh, so the revenue anticipation note and investment bid, typically we annually provide revenue anticipation note investment bid documents and loan documents for board member signatures. After conferring with the community bank, they recommend the board approve the bid as usual, and they are also suggesting a second motion to authorize the board chair to sign on the loan document for the board by electronic means. So there's two motions. One is to approve the revenue anticipation note and investment bid from community bank. And the second is to authorize the board chair to sign the loan document on behalf of the board by electronic means. I apologize for reading that, but in case you weren't able to get no. your hands on it quickly. Uh, thank you. Um, found it in the meantime. Um, so would anybody like to make that first motion? Uh, I'll move that we approve the anticipation note from Community Bank. Very good. Um, so the, uh, the full text, Lisa, oh. do you have, oh, sorry. Do you mind reading the full text a bit, Flo? Do you, do you have it with? I don't have it right in front in front of me. Hold on a minute. I just moved to the board to, to approve the revenue anticipation note um, and investment bid. Perhaps yes. an investment bid from Community Bank NA, 
Uh, and then the, shall I read that second one? The second so, um, or are you doing them one by one? one? I think we better, might as well do them okay. one by one and just try to dispatch them as um, quickly as we can. Uh, do I have a second for the first motion? Jonas, thank you very second. much. Um, Jonas, but you too, Chris. Um, so, discussion. Uh, all in favor, then, please click yes. Opposed, click no. And once again, I'm, I'm seeing all yeses. Thank you very much. Okay, the next motion. Um, okay, back to our packet. Right. Be on page six. Uh, well, the, the second recommended motion. Oh, sorry, I, author... I thought you had finished that already. I apologize. No, no, um, we still have this last bit. Sorry. Yeah, um, my fault. Not a problem. Do we have anyone who will move to authorize the board chair to sign the loan document for the board via electronic means? So moved. Chris moves. Second, please. I seconded. Thanks, seconded Diane. Diane. Diane seconds, thank you. Um, discussion? If not, then let's move to a vote. All in favor, click yes. Opposed, no. And all yeses. Thank you once again, everyone. All right, so um, back up to the um, construction bids on page six. Yes. Okay. So first is the Romney sidewalk bid recommendation. And it's recommended for the approval of the bid provided by J. Merrill Construction LLC in the amount of $115,280. And um, we'd be uh, appreciate a motion and certainly can answer any questions you may have. Okay, very good. How about a motion to approve the Romney sidewalk bid? I'll make that motion to approve the Romney sidewalk bid in the amount of $115,280. Thank you, Chris. Second? Okay. Dorothy okay. seconds. Thank you, Dorothy. May um, I suggest adding the, who we're awarding the bid to, uh, to J. Merrill Construction LLC, please? To, so to uh, award the bid to J. Merrill Construction LLC. Thank you. And Dorothy, your second still holds. Very good. Great. Okay. Um, any discussion of this? I just get a quick description of, of what was wrong with the sidewalk there. Um, it was, it is cracked and uh, rising up. It's, uh, people are tripping over it. Um, it has, it needs to be replaced. It's unsafe. Okay. Um, other questions? If not, let's move to a vote. All in favor of approving the bid um, as moved by Chris and seconded by Dorothy, please click yes. Opposed, click no. I see all yeses. Many thanks yet again. And um, we move on to the U32 gym equipment, I believe. Yes. Uh, the next page or a few pages down, um, page eight, I believe, you will see the recommendation for the U32 equipment project. And we recommend approval of the bid provided like Lajeunesse Interiors Incorporated in the amount of 54,775. And this includes repair and replacement of a stage rigging batting cage, fold up curtain bleachers, basketball hoops, uh, fold up curtain at the gym division, shooting station, net, and uh, overall, some overall defective equipment repairs. Okay. Um, so do we have a motion? <clears throat> I move, I move we approve the bid provided by Lajeunesse Interiors Inc. in the amount of 54775 for the U32 gym equipment. Thank you, Stephen. Second. 
I'll second it. It's Lindy. Oh, I, I thought I saw. Oh, okay, Lindy. Um, you, your voice spoke before uh, Kari's hand registered. So, um, thank you. Uh, any discussion of this? If not, we can move to a vote. All in favor of approving the bid as moved by Stephen and seconded by Lindy, please click yes. Opposed, click no. I see all yeses. Motion carries. Thank you, everyone, once again. And moving on further to U32 sidewalk bid. Um, yes, this is phase one of a multi-part project where we're going to be repairing the sidewalk in the front of U32 building at the entryway. Similar to Romney, um, the sidewalk requires repair because of cracks and um, areas that have in risen and uh, it, it is again unsafe for folks who are walking and or utilizing any kind of uh, wheelchair and that type of equipment. We will come back at another time in a future year to complete the remainder of the sidewalk project, but it's a portion of that due to the budget. Okay, okay. thanks. It's, so it, it looks as though this will be two separate actions. Yes. Um, Okay, uh, would anyone like to make the motion? So moved. Oh, uh, I, I'm not sure we've actually- You need more, more specifics? We may need more specifics, okay. yes, please, Chris. I move that we award, okay, award bid in the amount of $166,000, uh, which includes a transfer of $20,000 from the Capital um, fund. Uh, we may have to do that um, one separately. To... Is Chris, Chris, um, oh, really? just for a sec. Um, yeah, I think we might have to do the, the other one separate. Okay, so I move that we award the bid for the U32 sidewalk reconstruction to Avery Excavating in the amount of $166,000. Great, thank you. Um, second? Second. Thank you, Stephen. Any further discussion of this part? If not, please click yes. If you're in favor, no, if you're opposed. And once again, all yeses, the motion carries. And um, now I, the, the second motion for the uh, capital fund transfer. I move, I move the, that we uh, transfer twenty thousand dollars from the district. Oh, I think Lindy was uh, Lindy was off and running. Chris, no, it was Diane. Oh, oh it was <laughs> Diane. I'm sorry. Yep, <laughs> Diane was off and running. <laughs> so <laughs> approve the it. transfer of twenty thousand from the district capital fund as the project cost for the project. Okay. Um, second. I'll second it. Thank you, Flora. All right, discussion on this one. If not, we can go to a vote. All in favor of transferring the $20,000, please click yes. Opposed, click no. And all yeses, once again, the motion carries. Um, now, I, I think, are we then... <clears throat> Is that all for the construction bids? Yes. Okay, um, now we have an insurance bid on page 11 of the packet. Um, so we have um, received a bid from Liberty Mutual. We recommend that the board approve uh, the bid for workers' compensation insurance and um, also for property liability and related insurance carriers. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Workers' compensation is to the A Mutual Insurance Company <laughs> and the property liability and related insurance bid to the Liberty Mutual Insurance Company. And the details are in your packet. Mm -hmm. This would be a one-year period. Can we, com uh, the, the appointment of Dennis Stricker brown as our insurance agent, is that, um, does that require our action as well? 
I believe it does, yes. So we could take them, and there's also a note for the uh, to authorize the superintendent to sign the contracts associated with these policies. How about, can we, you may have already covered that in your last motion. Yeah, yeah. Um, can we combine these two? The appointment and the so. award? Sure, uh-huh. Okay, would anyone like to move this? I'll move it that we appoint Dennis Ricker and Brown as the WCUUSD insurance agent for uh, the school year July 1, 2020 through June 30, 2021, and to award uh, the insurance bid in the amount of $222,434 uh, to Liberty Mutual Insurance Company. Second. Um, uh, Thank you, Kai and, and Chris. Um, I'm just wondering, the total is 222434 but that's split, right, between Liberty Mutual and AIM Mutual? I just needed to clarify, um, the, the column is under the combined total, 198433 is the bid. The budget uh -huh. is the 222. That is the 222. Thank you, Lori. Yes. So if you oh, could just okay. uh, award the total and you've worded it perfectly, I think we're good. Great. And we're so, under budget by 24,000. Okay, so I'll amend that, that motion to have the award of $198,433. Very good. And Kari seconds still? Very good. Um, any discussion of this? I have a question. It, I'm just curious, does anyone know our um, workers' comp modification factor? Lori, do you have that information? I'm not. I, I, the last audit we had was a 0.7, so we're in very good shape. It's less than oh, 1%. Wow, that's great. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that, that was a pro question, Kari. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That was. So one one point zero would mean we're average. So point seven means we're thirty percent safer than average, which is fantastic. It means we're saving a lot of money. That's that. That's the biggest business headache question. Yeah, that that's really good to know, and and thank you for that explanation as well. So if there is no other discussion, shall we go to a vote then? All in favor of the um, the motion as made by Chris and, and seconded by Kari, please click yes. Opposed, click no. And once again, all yeses, the motion carries. Thank you very much, everyone. Now, I, I think that does it for board operations and we can move on to reports. Uh, Superintendent. Yes, good evening again, everyone. Um, if you've had a chance to review my report, you know that it's full of very positive and exciting things in regards to, um, hold on one second. Jill is joining us. Um, in regards to our end of year celebrations. So on June 12th is our scheduled uh, virtual high school graduation. And you've already heard a bit from Mia about that. Um, I believe, and if Stephen is on the line or Amy, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but we did uh, settle on 6 p.m. as the time, the start time for that live stream event. Is that correct? That is correct. Awesome. Please note that um, that is a remote only event, so we will not be able to accommodate um, large numbers of, of the op audience for that, but you are welcome to observe it live online. It will be through ORCA. We also wanted to invite our board members, however, if you wish to join us during any of the, uh, to observe or welcome or thank, excuse me, any of our seniors who are graduating, um, you just need to give Leslie Fitch a call and tell us uh, whom you would like to be present for. And there will be, as you can see from this report, a space set up in the, um, in the parking lot for you to come and observe and wave as those individuals. Now, I understand that since I wrote this, there's been an adjustment to the date, uh, the dates from which we will be providing the vehicle 
a distribution of diplomas. It was initially to be two days, but I think we've switched that to one. Is that correct? Stephen, I know that was something I heard yes. about late yesterday. Yeah, so <laughs> what we learned was that um, the, uh, we, we saw school doing it. We had overestimated time that it would take us for each graduate. So we found that we could do it in a uh, shorter amount of time Okay. And uh, and so we did shorten it to Saturday instead of both Saturday and Sunday. Okay, great. So uh, this is incorrect, but it's just because it was a late breaking change. And um, once again, we welcome your participation. Please feel free to email um, Leslie and she will let you know where your specific graduate is going ah. to be in terms of time. So thank you. Any questions about our high school graduation for Stephen or myself? We're all set. Okay. Just and thank you for doing it. All oh, right. Yeah. It took a lot of organization from you guys, and thank you. It means a lot to a lot of students and parents. Absolutely. It'll be a great event, and I know it will. Our elementary schools have chosen to use the same format for their recognition of sixth graders as they transition to the middle school. So as you can see in the bottom of page 12 and the top of 13, um, what I've noted here are the start times for the vehicle uh, diploma pickups. However, each of the uh, groups will be having a virtual ceremony, some of which will be recorded and some live streamed. And uh, if you're interested in more information about those, you can contact me and I will or contact the principals directly. Um, if you would like to, to learn more about that, if you wish to accompany um, the vehicles in the parking lot again um, for that drive through ceremony. And um, again, there's been a lot of excitement about that and, and as always great community planning. And I think it'll be, those will be wonderful events. And they begin next week, uh, starting on the 9th and concluding on the 11th. Questions about those? Okay, um, so there were some questions earlier about the summer and how we're moving forward. So um, you can see here that we are um, in the process of summarizing survey information from our community and determining uh, what type of scale of meal um, provision we're going to be required to provide. So we don't have the details on that. We appreciate your giving us um, the go ahead to put the details together and we will be providing meal delivery, but the exact numbers um, are at this point still being calculated. Uh, and we will continue to do that or originate that work out of Youth Montpelier as we had discussed before because of our construction at the uh, kitchen at U32. Um, summer school, our plan at this time is remote services and uh, there's no in service in-person work this year for that. Um, we also are gauging the community's interest in our summer camp uh, and we have surveys out to parents and we will um, see what kind of interest there is. This summer camp is a child care type of camp run by Community Connections. Uh, we will have limited spaces available here and again only at East Montpelier due to construction at other sites. So I think the next section um, kind of talks a bit about planning for the future. We um, just to give you a few highlights. Uh, we have a team of folks who are putting together a survey which we will uh, send out to our parents both to gain feedback about the success of our remote learning this spring and advice and information that will help guide us in our planning for the fall. Um, at this time, we are anticipating guidance from the AOE, perhaps this week or next, that might uh, provide us with some parameters around our planning. We expect it'll be primarily contingency planning. Uh, we'll be looking at uh, um, hoping for in-person instruction, but developing remote plans as a contingency or perhaps a combination. And as some of you who were present in the Ed Quality Committee, I'm certain heard uh, from Jen, there's also going to be the opportunity when school resumes for our teachers to assess our children's progress and make determinations of exactly how we need to proceed with our uh, instruction in the fall. Um, we have identified a um, 
task force groups, uh, numbering 11 at this point in time. And those are to address many of the logistics that are associated with planning for the contingencies in the fall. Uh, just as you hear, if any of you have had an opportunity to hear from the governor, and almost every time he provides a um, press conference, he'll say, what I'm going to be suggesting to you now is contingent on guidance from the CDC and the, and the public health situation as it evolves. Uh, and I, I think that you'll hear us saying that for the next several weeks and months. And uh, we will be prepared with a number of contingencies, but really until we come closer to the start of the year, it'll be, um, we will still be needing to guide our decision-making based on um, the health and safety of all of our students. Uh, let's see. I think that pretty much covers where we are with the next fall, but let me pause for a minute and see if you have further questions. There will be much work to do, many plans to make. Um, uh, greater than, if it's possible, the crisis planning that we did this past spring when we were informed with a few days notice that schools were closing for the rest of the year. So um, this planning, the good news is that we're experienced planners, <laughs> um, but we also realize that there are many, um, many provisions and parameters that will have to be taken into account as we move forward. Uh, tired planners, I imagine, too. Um, and, and thank you for addressing David Lawrence's questions also, Deborah. That's great. Sure. Other, yeah. other questions from board members? It's pretty comprehensive. All, all right. Okay. Um, uh, Just wanted to mention quickly that we, we did, if you don't mind, I'll quickly say that we did uh, send out our letters to support staff, to all employees regarding the early retirement option as well. Uh, and that deadline of September 15th. And I just wanted to once again, thank our staff. I know we'll have a chance to do that again on the 17th, but uh, school will end on June 11th and uh, our staff will remain through the 19th uh, to assist us with all the planning that we have scheduled and as well as the curriculum and instruction work that we typically do during that time frame. Thank you very much, Deborah. That's great. All right. Um, what I propose that we do is um, maybe take five uh, before we um, start climbing the mountain of policies that Chris and his committee have prepared for us uh, to tackle today. Um, any objection to that? Five minute break back at uh, say 8.04 by my computer clock. Okay, let's go. Good. See you soon. Thanks. Hey. Okay, I see 8.04 on the computer clock. And um, welcome back everyone. I hope you feel refreshed. Um, we're on 5.2 policy and I count no fewer than 11 uh, separate uh, policies is that is that about right, Chris? That are up for second reading and then one for first reading. Yes. So, um, how do you want to proceed, Scott, in terms of um, moving them, um, moving the the second reading? You want to move them all as late? I I would. I would be happy to move all of them as a slate um, if you're if you're up for that. It does. Uh, does anyone have an objection before we do that? Speak now, please. I, I can't necessarily s um, see you if you object. Um, okay. How about if you can uh, speak I, now? Move, move late. What was that again, Chris? If you're going to speak now, move them as a slate. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so let's move them as a slate. Who would like to do the honors? It's a long motion. So kind of your department, Chris. 
<laughs> okay, I will move that we um, approve as a slate um, the following policies. B40, non-retribution uh, slash retaliation. Number C2, student alcohol and drugs policy. C3, transportation. C5, uh, weapons and firearms. C6, um, home study students. C7, student attendance. C8, uh, pupil privacy rights. C10 and C10P, uh, prevention of harassment, hazing, and bullying policy and procedures. C11, student freedom of expression in school sponsored media. C30, student medication. C32, 18 year old student policies. And I'd like to amend my own motion to take out uh, C7, student attendance, because I think we were going to revisit that at our next policy meeting. Okay, so um, the Chris has moved the, um, the list of policies under 5.2.1 off for second reading, which means when we vote on them, we approve them. They uh, go into effect. Um, how about discussion of these? Oh, oh, no, we need a second first, sorry. Except Dorothy seconds. Okay, very good. Um, and Lisa, you got that C7 is coming out of that batch? Yeah, I got it, thank you. Wonderful, thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, um, uh, Stephen, look. What do you think about these policies? <laughs> I've been through them and was satisfied with the adjustments made from the first reading. Great. Um, are there other 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 questions or uh, comments or concerns? If there are none, um, this is a big batch, but they've been they've been gone over, I think, quite thoroughly and seriously. So, um, if you're ready for a vote, all in favor, please click your yes button, and if you opposed to that slate of policies, please click your no button. And I see all yeses. The policies pass unanimously. Fantastic. That was um, uh, that was the biggest chunk to swallow. Um, so moving on to five point two point two, the first reading of the search and seizure, the student search and seizure policy. Um, Chris. Oh, I think you're muted. Great. Okay. Um, any questions on the search and see policy? Uh, we have, uh, I think we're going to be working a little bit more. Oh, no, not on this one, but a different one. Any questions on this search and seizure policy? Any comments? Chris, can you just remind um, me what, what page it's on? I 52. 52. Wait, no. 52, thank you. Sorry, I was just having trouble finding it again. Ah, uh, yes. You know, what we went around and around in uh, was the um, definition for personal search in terms of how um, how intrusive that could be in terms of clothing removal. Um, and I think we hit upon a, um, a good solution here, but we'd, we'd really uh, like to hear your comments. Sorry, you guys, did somebody make a motion on that one yet? I was tuning out for a minute. There, 
No motion, Lisa, just a oh. first reading. Okay, okay, thanks. Scott, you muted. Sorry, uh, anyway, um, thank you, that Lisa, looks enjoyable. for that honest admission. <laughs> okay, so uh, comments, um, particularly on this question of, uh, of loosening or removing clothing. Um, this is Jill. I, I just was curious, Chris, why you guys took out the, the list of the examples and changed it to this this term primary layer of clothing, which I have to confess, I, it doesn't seem like a term of art. So I was, uh, I mean, I think it's probably okay, but I was just curious what your thinking was. Um, I think to, to, so you wouldn't be restricted to those particular items. Mm -hmm. it, it's, we think it's just a little bit broader to, um, so like, if if it were yeah, that's I think that's the reasoning behind the, the change. Mm -hmm. And so any reason not to say something like a student's primary layer of clothing such as a shirt or pants shall not be removed just to since primary layer of clothing is not you know, may not be actually entirely self evident. You know, just, you know, if that's the, you, the, um, just to the board, I have, I have no qualms about that. I mean, we started off that way and it just may be, mm -hmm. you know, that might be a, a good guidance to what we, what primary layer means. Right. As a pedantic member of the public, I'd say it actually needs a definition because I could make a convincing argument that your primary layer is the first layer you put on. So why are you talking about my underwear? I think um, Jody uh, said had said there were problems with a, what a sweatshirt was. So there could be a t-shirt under it, or there could not be. And so was that you know? I think that's where I, we began to explore a different way to describe it. That's my memory. Mm -hmm. This Steve. is this is Steve. So, um. I'll weigh in now, discussion started. When I read it, I read it that all the clothes could be removed down to the layer of the underwear. That's what I interpreted primary layer of clothing to be. But now hearing others talk, um, I, I can see where saying primary layer of clothing could, could be quite vague. I mean, am I right? Is that what the, the policy committee was interpreting? So saying primary layer of clothing, you could have all your clothing removed to the underwear, but you had to keep, you no. couldn't remove the underwear. No, 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 the was, does not get to the underwear layer. The primary layer would be basic, basic shirt, basic pants, things like that. Um, we were not, intending to say oh you can remove and and our goal was because it it said um about removing clothing and the concern was clothing in and of itself is very broad uh and so it could end up you know being a, basically a strip search uh and we didn't want that and so when we're talking about the primary layer it was really to differentiate between a t-shirt versus a sweatshirt which we considered an outer layer of clothing, uh, but pants, skirt, you know, and then so if, if a student had pants or skirt and then underwear, neither would be removed in the, in the scope of a search. Um, same thing for, you know, like a, a um, God, I, I imagine for, uh, you know, undershirt, like um, a blouse or shirt and bra or, bla or shirt and undershirt. The, those items would not be removed in terms of a search. And that, that's what our, our goal was. So would it be helpful to, as, as sort of a, um, a sub definition to define 
primary layer. Yes, and we could do that. Yeah, I, I have to confess, I actually read the primary layer phrase exactly as Stephen did the first time. I had to read it several times to make, because I was like, they can't mean that. So, uh, yeah. I, Thank you. I, I get, I get what you're struggling with. That. <laughs> I didn't think you meant that. Um, well, I like Scott's suggestion. If If you added a definition of primary layer, and I'm not going to suggest to the policy committee this exact language, but something to the effect of the language that the primary layer is the layer of clothing that immediately that immediately covers the the undergarments or underwear or something like that. Some form of determining actually that's not delineating that's what the primary layer is. Actually, Stephen, that's that's a helpful one, I think. Well, as for me, I'm sure the policy committee can do better. Maybe that just gives you a place to start. Okay. Any other comments on the um, overall search policy? Um, I would just say I like the addition of the outer layers of clothing. I did think that was clarifying, given everything I've heard. So I support that phrase being added. I think that's pretty clear. Okay. Do you have what you need, Chris? I do. Thank you. Great. Thanks, um, everybody. Yeah. Great. That, so that, thanks very much for your comments. They're very helpful. Wonderful. All right. Um, in that case, we can move on to 5.3, the ESP negotiations. Jonas? Uh, so we had a uh, really productive session on uh, Monday. Um, I, we have a, another session tentatively scheduled for next Monday. Uh, we are, I think everyone in the room, vir everyone in the virtual room is, is uh, hopeful and optimistic that we will be able to uh, get and get, you know, get to an agreement on Monday uh, in time for uh, the union to ratify and for us to hopefully approve uh, the agreement at our uh, next meeting before we get to June 30th. And thanks to everyone uh, who joined the uh, the negotiation committee executive session earlier today. Uh, some really good feedback, and I, I appreciate everyone's ears. And, and we very much appreciate the work of the negotiations committee. Uh, that's uh, a very difficult one. Um, and thank you for your success in this. Um, Five point four. Uh, unless there's any any uh, anything for Jonas. Um, we can move on to 5.4, which is education quality. Kari? Okay, thanks. Um, if it's okay, I'll just start with a quick report of tonight's meeting. We had a fantastic committee meeting, and um, let me just pull up my notes here. Um, <clears throat> we, um, we talked briefly about the charter, which we'll, we'll get into in just a moment. Um, we took our monthly look at data. Um, this time it was uh, some SBAC results for three different cohorts for literacy and math over a five year period. Be happy to go into that, but um, um, probably another time. Um, we also looked at post secondary um, results. And um, for example, our, our four year graduation rate is generally between 87 90% has been steady over the five year period ending 2018. Uh, looked at SAT and ACT averages um, and some of the advanced placement classes and results um, and heard from our students about the challenges of taking the AP tests remotely this year. And then we approved a, a monitoring calendar for the year so that over the coming year, we have a plan to examine each of the different student learning outcomes and other aspects of our educational programs, including the 
continuous improvement uh, plan and post-secondary updates. So, um, and then finally, we had an update on remote learning. We got some insights uh, about um, so the complexity and the extraordinary efforts that our staff are making each day. There was a um, there was a request that I, um, of the board I wanted to pass along, which was um, generally described um, a high level of planning um, and a weariness that sort of set in with all the planning and and um, looking to the future and just asking for some understanding from the board about all the learning and the planning and the coordination that the staff is taking on right now. So, and one thing I wanted to highlight is that um, question for us, I think, is how were we going to share our findings with the full board? And um, that's something I'd probably like to talk with the um, steering committee about um, what makes the most sense in terms of um, board time and packet space and all of that. So if there aren't any questions about that, I'll move into the, um, the proposed charter. I'd like to mention that all the board members do receive the materials for both committees. Uh, so the presentation that Jen put together and shared with you uh, was received by everyone. Are you, would you like before? Oh, oh sorry, Stephen. Chris had his hand up too. I don't know. Do you I, want to go I first, Chris? Um, you know, Stephen, it's going to be age before beauty, so you can go first. Um, so let me qualify my question by I'm thrilled by the effort that has been made since we've gone online. And my question is of the quality committee, are they satisfied with what they're seeing from the quality of the outcomes? I Speaking for myself, I don't know that we're in a position to judge that. I don't, I, we haven't gone in, into enough depth to see what the outcomes are. Uh, okay. We've only heard about the activities and the challenges and some of the successes. Okay. Just so, I mean, Kari, you know somewhat how I feel. It's nice to know what's been done and it's nice to know the plan. I want to know the outcomes. So if yeah. it hasn't been covered yet, that's fine. I, I, I'll wait, and when we when we have an assessment, I'll be interested in it. Sure. So, floor, did you? Comment well, on actually, that? Chris, um, now we can really do age before uh, beauty. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just going to suggest, in terms of um, getting information out there, you could just post it on the website. Um, if we're concerned about packet space and, or anything like that and just um, notify board members either by email and saying this is now up on the website um, as, a, as a resource. Okay, thank you. Hello. Thanks. I, well, I was just going to say to Stephen that bef before it, we had the new members on the board, we did spend a little time trying to go back to those goals that when you were part of the board too, that we had set for math and literacy, especially for math. So we did we did do that uh, back then, and we we had some some findings. So it, you know, not all the schools were able to reach that that growth that we had done, but we we have been working towards setting uh, goals and monitoring I, them. I, I'm more than comfortable to wait in, okay. until the committee has something. Um, they've had a chance to to do that work and have something to report. That's fine. I'm I'm okay. Any, anybody else with, um, uh, before, we, before we move to the action on the charter for the Education Quality Committee? Um, uh, Kari, would you like to move it and then we can discuss it? Absolutely, so I'll move that we accept the proposed charter for the School Quality Committee. Kari moves, second. I'll second. I'll second it. Um, I'll second it. Okay. Um, Many, many candidates, but I'll take Jonas. Um, I think Jonas went first. <laughs> so, um, Kari, please. Um, so, I mean, the, the charter hopefully speaks for itself. Basically, we're here to help the board understand the learning that's happening and student success is defined by the student learning outcomes. 
One hope that we have, I think, is that the board will become proficient itself in assessing a variety of uh, data sources and other evidence um, so that we understand how the system is functioning and we can use that knowledge um, eventually for planning and budgeting and community engagement. So we've got some learning to do ourselves about our system and then we can turn that into action. That would be, that would be a good outcome. That's great. Yes. A any other um, comments or uh, anything to say about the community charter? I, apart from that, it looks really good from my perspective. I shouldn't editorialize at this point, but there you go. Um, otherwise, if there are no further comments, we can move to a vote on um, approving the committee charter for the Education Quality Committee. All in favor? Sorry. All in favor, please click yes. Um, if you're opposed, please click no. And I see, I see all yeses. Great. The motion carries. The charter is approved. Thank you very much, Kari, and, and many, many thanks to your committee. OK. Um, uh, at this point, where are we? Um, consent agenda. Um, the minutes of May 20th, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve the minutes of May 20th. Jonas moves. Second. Second. Uh, actually, I saw, thank you, Stephen. I saw Flora's hand first. Stephen is fine. <laughs> Stephen is fine. OK. Um, uh, so Jonas moves, Stephen seconds. Any changes to the minutes? <clears throat> Any corrections? They look good? OK. All in favor of approving the minutes of May 20th, please click yes. Opposed, click no. OK, um, carries unanimously. Now, um, the board orders, I, I don't have them in front of me. Would someone be willing to read out the amounts, please, um, in a motion to approve? I can move the check warrant for 521.20 to 603.20 for 213,000 with six, 213,006 dollars with 44 cents. Mm -hmm. And the capital warrant for two hundred and eighty-four dollars with thirty-one cents. Thank you, Flora. Um, second, Dorothy seconds. Very good. Any questions about the board warrants? If not, um, please click yes to approve. No, if you're opposed. And once again, um, all the S's. Many thanks. And uh, I know that a, a number of you already have sent in your your in lieu of signatures. So um, please, if you haven't, do that when you get a chance. Um, all right, personnel. <clears throat> now the personnel actions were. Um, in a separate email, uh, and in fact, an updated email, as I recall. Um, is that correct, Deborah? Yes, uh, this is the time of year when we make a number of hiring decisions, and uh, there were some that were finalized Friday, and the rest were completed this week. So if you could please check your emails for uh, later this afternoon, there was a updated document. Uh, of the superintendent personnel summary for recommendations. And while you are looking for that, I can review if you would like, or I can wait a moment. Um, I, I don't think we need to wait. I think we can, um, uh, we could even start moving to approve the nominations for uh, the hiring nominations, if someone, okay. if someone sure. wishes to do that. So we are recommending Dawn Bates as in our early 
essential education teacher at a full-time position and Meta Bravo's uh, Kellis music teacher at point four. Great. I move um, that we accept the recommendation to hire Don Bates and Meta Bravo's. Thank you, Lindy. Is there a second? A second, this is Jill. Thank you, Jill. Good, um, any discussion? Questions? If not, we'll move to a vote. All in favor, please click yes. Opposed, no. And I'm seeing all yeses. Thanks, everyone. All right. Um, I, I don't see any retirements this time. Is that correct? Not this time. OK. There is, however, a resignation that we need to approve. Yes, uh, Peter Arsenal is going to be um, has accepted a position in a district in his hometown and uh, had appropriately asked us for an extension of his contract and uh, subsequently resigned. So we will be seeking to uh, replace that position. Very good. Is there a motion? So moved. Floor moves to accept the resignation of Peter Arsenal. Second? Second by Diane. Diane seconds, thank you. Any further discussion, questions? If not, please click yes to indicate approving the resignation. No if you oppose it. And I see all yeses. Great, that motion carries. Um, I, I once again uh seen Oh, sorry, did I miss somebody? No, me, Lisa. Sorry. Oh, yes, Lisa. Can, can, can somebody spell the name of that person, the music teacher? Oh, yeah. Um, M-E-T-A. Yeah. Okay. B oh, and then B-R-A-V-O-S. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, thanks, Lisa. I appreciate your, you know, any time... Um, this happens and you need clarification. I'm glad you pipe up. It's good. Um, leave of absence request. I see none. But I do see a bunch of changes in FTE, which I, I presume we can vote as, uh, as a batch, right? I hope so. Sure. I'd be happy to review them first, if you would like. Sure. You would, did sure. you want to take a motion, though, in advance of my discussion? If or? someone would like to make the motion, that would be great. I'll move. Uh, this to is Jill. Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I was going to move that we uh, accept the recommendation uh, for the changes in FTEs. Great. As and Jonas? Presented. Wonderful. And Jonas, may I take yours as a second? Please. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, yes, please, Deborah. Yes, uh, Michelle Tofel Murray uh, is our English language learner, ELL teacher. And we um, had budgeted a 0.5 position, but our anticipation is an increase in student needs that will require her contract to be at 0.8 FTE. And we'd like to, uh, we believe we have enough sufficient information at this time to make that recommendation for the fall. We'd like to re and request that you approve that. Uh, next is Kimberly McKellar, who is our U32 work based learning coordinator. And we are looking to increase her position to a total of 0.8. She's currently a 0.6. Erin um, Galligan Baldwin who is our U32 Theater Performing Arts Director. Um, we would like to add 0.2 FTE so that she can teach an English class for a total of 1.0. Uh, and um, er Erica Rose, we would like to um, add for Callis a 0.4 FTE as art teacher. And she would remain at Rumney as a 0.2 art teacher for a total of 0.6. So exciting here that we're sharing staff across our elementary schools. Great to see. And similarly, we have a recommendation for another art teacher, Jen Campbell, who are to become an uh, East Montpelier art teacher for 0.5 FTE. 
and uh, remain at Rumney for 0.5 FTE uh, as an art teacher. So she'd be sure between the two schools. She um, currently has a 0.4 para position and she would resign that. So she'd be a full-time teacher shared between two schools. I know that there's a slight change in her FTE at Romney, but Casey assures me that will not affect students. Any questions? No questions. In that case, we'll move to a vote. All in favor of approving the changes in FTE as moved by Jill and seconded by Jonas, please click yes. Opposed, no. And again, um, I'm seeing all the yeses. Thanks everyone. Okay. Um, so now we're on to 8.0 and 8.1, uh, the future agenda items, the finance committee is um, has a treat for us. Right, Fleur? The, the, the finance committee in the in the last, uh, we're going to meet at next uh, at our the third uh, Wednesday of the of the month at five o'clock. Uh, we would like, uh, I think Deborah already, or uh, Krista shared the link for the efficiency study that we would like everybody to, to, to look at. We haven't met since our last report that we gave at the previous uh, uh, board meeting, so I don't have a lot to, to really add, except that we are going to take a first uh, look at the efficiency studies ourselves, but we have shared it with the board so that everybody is informed. Is there something else that you were thinking I will add to that, Scott? Uh, no, no I, I just see that it says construction update is 8.1.2. Oh, that was that was Deborah wanted to give. We haven't had the the meeting with Bill Ford yet, but Deborah did want it to give us an uh, an update in construction. Great, thank you, Flor. Deborah. Uh, they can no at the next meeting of the finance. Committee, oh, at the next meeting, at, future, uh, future. Yes, future. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the future is now. Um, <laughs> So uh, that's great. In that case, the, we have 9.0 uh, executive session. May I have a motion to go into executive session, please? Can, can I have a clarifying question? Uh, Scott, are we gonna do both the teacher and teacher appreciation and executive session and uh, the other subject or how are we gonna, because we, we skipped 4.1 <sighs> or was I asleep? <laughs> Oh my gosh, yeah. So, um, I, I don't want to miss the teacher appreciation because we, Diane has, we have information with us and I know that we we want it still to be surprised for staff and teachers. So we talked about this, the description of what it was, if possible in executive session, if that's a legal and okay with everybody. Yeah. Otherwise we we would discuss it now. And um, I'm, I'm, everybody in the meeting can keep it quiet. I don't know. So sorry. <laughs> Um, or what we could do, what we could do if you wanted, is um, we could go into an executive session and then come out. And then um, I think we will have lost a lot of the people who might be surprised by that time. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter. I just don't want to forget it. So I no, would no, I no. I, a, I'm, a, I'm so sorry. Your opinion too, but yeah, I, oh, I, that I, is I that's that entirely reason. my fault. Um, uh, okay. Um, I, I also, I'm sorry. Um, this is a, I was, there was a chat question asked earlier, and I don't know if you want me to try to answer that. It was uh, regarding our summer meal program. Mm -hmm. And um, I could, we had promised to report to you our estimate for expenses at this upcoming meet and at this current meeting, but because we are just surveying families, we couldn't give you um, the exact amount. Um, but we can give you an, a rough estimate of 114288 which would include busing at $24,828. Uh, and after revenues, the projected support would be 37637 So if you'd be willing to um, agree to allow us to implement the program, 
we'd like we anticipate that will be the overall uh, expense thirty seven thousand six thirty seven and it could be less if we have fewer people participating fewer families so uh, are you asking us for well, if you'd be willing, it would, and um, our team was, has been working on this um, and the information just came to light yesterday. So I wasn't able to warn this and um, I do have it in an email um, hmm. as an estimate. So it's, if we wait, then that will postpone our initiation of the work. So I suppose if, if you'd be willing to at this late portion of the meeting to, uh, um, consider amending the agenda to follow up from our last meeting, take action on this, your financial support for the summer meal program um, with an estimate overall output be, uh, after revenues of 37,637, that would allow us to begin the process and do the work. Yeah, I, I'm not 100% comfortable um, acting on money without, without warning. Um, but I would leave it if board members um, are are in favor. It's a uh, it's a board decision. Um, the money my apologies the for my apologies for not getting it to you last week. We just were, didn't have time to pull all the details together. So excuse me, Lindy. I didn't hear you. I apologize. Is the money in the budget, or is this an, a new expense? Lori might still be there. Lori, are you still with us? Well, I'll ask, I'll ask you that question, whether or not the 37,000 is in our budget. No, um, the 37,000 is not in the budget. It would be a COVID expense, just like the program has currently been running. Um, based on surveys that we've received, we don't believe we'll have as much participation as we've previously had this year. So that is a very high estimate. Um, I do have to add that every year our community connections program ran in the summer at a slate profit, but what seems to be different is the delivery service. So I just wanted to let you know about that. Any other questions or? So because it's a COVID expense, it's subject to possible reimbursement? True. Um, we could also designate savings that we've experienced this spring by not having sports, et cetera if the COVID revenues do not come through. Um, this is Jill. Deborah, did you say that if we delay the vote on this, you will it will delay the students getting the meals? Delay, yeah. what will it delay? Okay. So the, what will it yeah, delay? I, yeah, thank you for asking that, Jill. So we are continuing to serve our students through June 18th. That's our summer, that's right. our school year program. But if we were to have your approval, we could prepare by um, assembling staff and ordering materials, having the transportation set up, ordering the food and getting ready. If we wait until the 17th of June, it just gives us a few weeks before we start. Uh, I'm not going to be carrying out the logistics, but Jody uh, Emerson is here and she's been overseeing that program. I, I think it would be very tight if we did wait until the middle of June for that approval. Chris? Uh, um, can we um, basically take a straw poll and get a sense of the board in terms of support rather than, you know, I, I think I agree with you, Scott, in terms of if we're going to do a money expenditure, we should, we should warrant it and then follow that procedure. But to give assurance to, for the planning purposes, we could also just get a sense of the board now um, as to mm -hmm. how the members feel. And, and hopefully that would be enough assurance to plan and schedule and things like that. And I, and I also have a question for Deborah. Um, did I did I hear you say that the expense would be about thirty seven thousand after revenues? Correct. That's and the I'm most. Just wondering it would if I heard be. that correctly, what revenues? The most it would be. Okay. Mm -hmm. What revenues are we ex expecting? The COVID revenues. Um, no, actually, we receive reimbursement. Um, so when we serve oh, a breakfast sure. and lunch, we get six dollars and twenty five cents for yeah. each. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, for both meals combined from the state and the federal government. So at the board okay, has already voted to, in favor of supporting our planning 
-hmm. We were asked, mm -hmm. you were asked us to come back with uh, more specific information. Mm -hmm. about us. Yeah, Fleur. Oh, uh, muted. Oh, the, in any of the parliamentary procedures, you're or you're able to do an emergency action and and have that that privilege. And this seems to be, you know, is COVID nineteen is an emergency. I, I don't. I'm not too worried about making a decision about money, especially because we had that vote at the last uh, meeting. So you know, we, we could raise that that question whether you want to qu call it a question of privilege or an emergency action. <laughs> So, so I, I'm not worried about making, I, I think it's an expense that we all agree, <laughs> at least wanted to have that, that, this, that mm -hmm. discussion. And I, I can't think of anything more important that we could be doing to taking care of our community. So that's mm -hmm. just my, my opinion. Okay, so Stephen. Um, I just, I, we, we did approve last, meeting to go forward with this project, correct? The worth right. of planning, yeah. Planning. Okay. Oh, we approve going forward with the planning? Right. Yeah, we just didn't approve the dollar amount, just the planning okay. to find out. And it's because it's outside of our typical budget that we're asking your approval. Um, yeah. I do believe that you have the authority to make take action uh, because you're in a regular meeting mm -hmm. uh, as and, well and as another Yeah, and Fleur, uh, Fleur's presentation of parliamentary, parliamentary procedure has impressed me greatly and um, I'm convinced. Uh, so Scott, so, I, have a, I just have a clarification because mm -hmm. this is, it's confusing me how it suddenly came up because it was in the chat. So I guess I'm surprised that it hadn't been put on the agenda um, in terms of getting an update around, I know that the up the money came in at the last minute, so the information was last minute. But had it not been posted in the chat, we wouldn't have even gotten that um, mm -hmm. brought up. So um, it, I absolutely agree that this is very critical for us to support meals for our communities, and I'm also a little worried and would like information as to what other resources are out there for our families since this is a change in in the delivery model which is completely understandable as well um but i guess it's just confusing to me uh we approved it for planning to come back and how it didn't get on the uh, agenda for us to double check on um it, so it's just a procedural question but i'm absolutely uh, in favor so of doing the work so I, I went back to the team who was doing the work last week and I asked if we'd be ready and they said they weren't certain and I did not want to post an agenda on for agenda for action without some surety. Kari, like any other board member, can ask for an agenda item to be raised and included, of course, on the agenda. Um, I would um, I received this email just today, just moments ago, actually, when I inquired about the progress of the team. So it is a last minute piece of information. You're absolutely right. We seem to be um, faced with a lot of situations like this, this school year and the, at the end of the year with uh, between the amount of, um, you know, the expectations for staff, their ability to pull information together, the changing guidance from the state of agency of education, um, questions uh, that are difficult to get answered in a timely manner. So I, I apologized for not having it um, on the warrant agenda, but I do believe it would be helpful if we could have your feedback today. Yeah, and let's, let's, let's do it then. Unless there's um, vehement objection from anyone um, on the basis of, of Fleur's intervention just a moment ago. Um, do we have a motion then to approve the um, expenditure of, <clears throat> up to $37,000 or whatever the amount was um, for, uh, for meals in the summer. So whatever, maybe. okay, uh, however the motion should be expressed, I don't wanna mess it up. This is a budgetary, this is budget, I, you know, I don't want a 36 or whatever. What's the amount of money that we're gonna approve? <laughs> And the I projected, think, the I projected amount of money is um, $37,637. Uh, 
And Lori has stated that that would likely be less if we have fewer participation. Uh, this past uh, week, we had 100 fewer meals, which we think is a result of childcare opening and people returning to work. But we don't know for certain what our summer requirements will be. Um, so I would make a motion that we make an emergency um, approval of 37,000. What was the rest of the total, Deborah? 637. 637 to um, fund the, and then I looked at Deborah Floor to finish summer the meal the, Summer meal program. Including, summer meal program. Including delivery. Including delivery. I'll second that. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, thank you both. Uh, any, any further discussion? Just if to, not, to oh, uh, Kari, clarify. please. Yeah. The, this is for the month of July still? Yes. Can you tell me what the wording was, Stephen, around the emergency part of it? Just so I get the motion right. Emergency approval. So I, I just wanted to delineate in the minutes for someone in the public that might question why we were spending money in, in a non-worn format, that it was an emergency decision that needed to be made and we were comfortable making that decision. Yeah. So, so emergency approval of the 37,000 and then the rest of the money. Okay, thanks. Sorry, Great. now I forgot who seconded it. I'm losing it here, sorry. <laughs> Oh, floor. Never mind. Never mind. Good. Fantastic. So if you're ready to go to a vote, um, all in favor, please click yes. And if you're opposed, click no. Thank you, everyone. Um, Kari, for especially for having um, made sure that we didn't overlook this, and Floor and Stephen for getting us through that procedural tangle. Um, good. Now, um, so uh, executive session. Um, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Uh, Chris moves, and uh, Lindy, I saw your hand up. Would you? Be willing to second? Okay. Uh, Chris moves. Lindy seconds. All in favor of going into executive session with Deborah, Jen, and Kelly um, invited in, uh, please click yes. And no if you're opposed. And I only see yeses. Okay, um, what that means is that, uh, Lisa, you don't have to hang out from this point on. We'll, we'll um, take care of things ourselves. And everybody else, um, thank you very much for being with us this evening. And we'll look forward to next time. Take good care in the meantime. Keith, would you be able to share hosting or put me in charge of the meeting before you hang up? And I think you can probably conclude as well. Is that possible? I, I can do that. I, um, did you, you weren't going to use a breakout room. You were just going to continue oh, the meeting as an executive um, session. No, I think, I think we can go with a breakout room because Orca will be here. Uh, but I just meant you don't need to stay is what I meant to say. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yes. If it's possible I, technically to do that. I can, I can do that. Um, I believe maybe what I should do is um, open the breakout room because you're all added into it already. Okay. And then I'll, Deborah, I would say, before you go into the breakout room, let me make you the host. Okay. And then I can, um, I can hop off. And if you need uh, any assistance after that, just let me know, I'll have my phone. So. Oh, that's kind of you. Thank you so much, Keith. Okay, here we go.